the first challenge is, of course, to get back to a sustainable growth. Uh, we have been uh, facing a very important crisis, uh, in fact, a global financial crisis, but also a sovereign debt crisis. I can say that those crises are now behind us, but the growth uh, is still, let's say, minimal. And so we have to have a sustained re growth. And that's why we are advocating now a mix of policies, uh, not only growth-friendly fiscal consolidation and uh, deep, deep uh, structural reforms, but also investment, because this, I think, is the most important issue. But of course, there are other problems uh, in Europe and other challenges. One of them internally is how to deal with these new movements um, that are populistic, sometimes xenophobic movements against migration. How can we keep Europe open at the same time that uh, there is a, a strong commitment to, uh, to the European Union as such? And there are also some security concerns in our borders. What happened recently between uh, Russia, Russia and Ukraine is certainly a matter of concern uh, in the east of the European Union, but also what's going on in the southern uh, border, including the situations from Libya to, 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 to uh, Syria, uh, Iraq, all those matters are uh, certainly something that are a challenge, not only, by the way, for Europe, but for global, global peace. So we have a lot of challenges, but one thing I am sure is that we can face them much better if we do it collectively as a union than uh, if our member states try to solve them in, on their own. The European Union, uh, people tend to forget that, is still the biggest economy in the world. Only the United States is uh, in the same league. Um, China is well behind, even if they are catching up quite quickly. Uh, but it's the biggest economy in the world, the European Union by GDP, and the biggest trade bloc in the world. So if the European economy is not going well, of course, that will have an effect. So once again, I'm proud that we have been able to solve the so-called existential crisis in terms of financial stability and regarding the sovereign debt, the euro, we have seen it's a very stable, credible and indeed strong currency, but more has to be done now to um, spur growth, sustainable growth. And I'm sure that if this, uh, this is going to happen, and that will be an important contribution we are also giving to global sustainable growth. We saw during the financial crisis uh, the dangers of uh, our member states not doing enough in terms of, uh, let's say, the control of public expenditure. But we are doing it in a differentiated, growth-friendly way. There are different situations in Europe. So we need to be sure that financial stability is assured. But we need to do more than that. And in fact, we have been advocating structural reforms for more competitiveness. Labor market reform, the pension reform, uh, product reform, opening services sector in many parts of Europe that still are not uh, sufficiently open, um, public administration, taxation reform. And it's impressive what has been happening in the last years. For instance, the countries that were most affected by the crisis, from Ireland to, to Greece, to Portugal, to Spain, it's impressive what they have done in terms of uh, structural reforms. But we are also saying that this is not enough. We need investment. And we have adopted, and now it's entering into force, starting its implementation, the European budget. So it's around uh, 1 trillion euros next seven years. And, and that's also a contribution to, uh, say, support demand. Um, apart from that, we have made the reforms in the governance in the European Union that now it's much more integrated than before to avoid problems like we had in the past. For instance, creating a banking union that we had not before. So the, there are now more powers and competences for the European Central Bank and for the European Commission than before, precisely to avoid negative spillover effects that we have seen in the past between uh, our economies. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that we are in the right direction. But now what is important is to keep the momentum and to deepen, of course, the implementation 
I don't think it's useful to discover the wheel every time. What we have now is to stick to the uh, reforms that have been promised.